Bob turned the headset over in his hand, his eyes running around the simple metal loop. He looked around at the others. They smiled and laughed quietly to themselves. He felt a scowl pull on his face. An unfamiliar sensation. He didn't like it. He would find something interesting in the loop. He always did, but that didn't seem enough. Gordon eased along his rail, coming down to settle beside Bob, his cameras twitching over Bob's face. Are you okay, Bob? I don't know. May I scan you? Bob twitched up two fingers to give consent, his focus falling off the loop to the other aliens, each wearing their own. They looked pleased, contented countenances which contained pleasant, polite smiles. He put down the loop and stepped along between the couches, seeing the occasional human as he went. Gordon followed him, his eye focused intently on Bob's head. I feel like I want something different, like I am missing something, said Bob. Gordon the caretaker hummed to himself thoughtfully. You seem in perfect health. Can you elaborate further on your feelings, Bob? Bob stepped outside, casting his eyes heavenward, seen an endless diver of green and white running around the inside of Sanctuary DQW. Aliens walked and played in the gardens. He could do the same, but he already knew that wasn't what he needed. It's like a craving that I cannot place, like when my body mistakenly believes it is low on a particular nutrient. You are drawing a parallel. This is not a craving? No. Hmm. It will rain tomorrow. That will provide a nice break in your usual schedule, mused Gordon. He switched over to an outside rail, following Bob onto the grass, easing along the garden edge with him, until Bob paused by a small machine pruning a plant. Bob watched the little sharp hand tool slice through plant flesh. What is he doing? Pruning. Some plants require simulated consumption to encourage growth. Growth felt good. Bob hadn't felt like he'd had growth in years. A change of physiology that leads to a change of mind, habits and desires. He had finished puberty six years ago, and life had been the same since. May I see that tool? Gordon was silent for a moment, which was unlike him. The camera focused intently on Bob, then eased down slowly to the garden bot. Gordon deployed his arm and transferred the tool from the garden bot to Bob. Secretors, do you wish to start your own garden? Something like that, said Bob, as he eased the secateurs over his thumb. There was a sudden spark deep inside him something new. It rose up through Bob, lifting his heart rate into a flutter. He fell short of breath. His hands tightened around the handle, feeling the sensation intensify as the metal eased tighter into his skin. Bob, what are you doing? I don't know, said Bob. It hurt more than he had ever felt. He sucked in a sharp breath as he squeezed tighter, Pangs of pain shooting up his arm, taking away his control. He would cut it off, and he would grow. He knew he wasn't a plant, but this was the closest thing he had felt that filled the void. Like a newly discovered key entering a lock he didn't know he had. A small molluscoid alien listened to his companion, cast a wary eye at Bob and started to slide away along the grass. He squeezed tighter, but not as hard as he wanted to. He tried again, but his hand only firmly gripped it. He knew he was stronger than this. He reached out to a woody branch, and as expected, it snipped straight off with little resistance. But when wrapped around his thumb, his hand refused to do it. Gordon loomed closer, breaking the bubble of personal space he almost never entered. Is this you, Gordon? No. You can't cut off your own thumb. Your own body won't allow you to do it. It is a protective instinct, similar to your inability to bite your tongue. Bob gave it a go, and as expected, he could only bite his tongue with equal force to how hard he could cut into his thumb. Red blood glittered down the metal, and it was there again, 
that rising rush, the wind and spark, but he could go no further. His own body was a padded barrier set against him. You promise it is not you? said Bob. By my manufacturer and by the honour of the 92 iterations of code that came before me, I am not preventing you from damaging yourself. Would you like to use the loop to research gardening? We could find plants that require regular pruning together. Gordon's hand eased down towards the secateurs, to Bob's traitorous hand, to his self-imposed limits. Bob felt his face draw into something twisted, his nose curling, unfamiliar muscles twitched to life. His teeth sheared over each other, his tongue running over point and molar. His jaw was set. His eyes flicked up to Gordon, who moved closer still. Aliens glanced his way and started to back off. Not the humans, though. Eyes flicked over him, everywhere. Others turned to stare, stepping through gardens, confusion flitting across their faces as he held their attention. Gordon's plastic shell brushed against Bob. Bob dropped the secateurs. He put his hands on Gordon and heaved him away, the safety on his rail giving out, causing the caretaker to slide away a few inches down the line. Bob wasn't breathing enough. His nerves were electric, his face twisted, but he had never felt better. It was wrong. He shouldn't. I'm sorry. Are you okay? said Bob. I am undamaged. Did you hurt yourself? I don't think so, said Bob. The secateurs. Bob glanced down, following Gordon's camera, and saw them sticking blade up in the grass. He nodded and stepped away from the hazard, letting Gordon take his place to offer them back to the garden bot. He stood back, hand to his heart, feeling it thud through his chest. Bob, this is Chloe. Chloe, this is Robert, or as he prefers to be called, Bob. A human woman warily stepped up to Bob, her eyes flicking between Gordon's and Bob's, her attention eventually falling onto Bob, her eyes running down to the strip of red that stained his otherwise perfect white tunic. Can you do that to me? Bob stared at her for a moment. He lifted his thumb to see the stinging cut. No, not that, she said. She put her hands up and threw them away. A push, said Gordon. Can you push me? Bob stepped into her. His hands on her shoulders and shoved away, throwing her back on stumbling feet until she crashed to the grass. Her eyes were wide, and she coughed, but then she smiled. A real smile blooming across her lips. A laugh bubbled up inside of her until it burst free. She had too much emotion to contain, rising up until it broke free and poured out of her. She looked down at the red stain he had left on her. She hefted herself up off the grass, her face twisting into raffle glee until her hands thudded into his chest. He stumbled back a pace. It felt just as good to be pushed as it did to push. He threw her back, but this time she was ready for it, and braced her weight against him, their arms tangling into a mess their feet driving down into overturning soil, bruising grass and stumbling together. Laughter sounded around them and feet padded up close until someone pushed Chloe from the side, catching her off guard and hurling her down to the soil with a start. She laughed with tears in her eyes. Bob stared at the new person. Bob, this is John. John, this is... Bob's fingers curled in on themselves tight, and his hands swung around, clubbing John across the jaw. The intruder hit the grass with a heavy thud. Bob looked up and saw a dozen humans. They started to push each other, all blissfully smiling. Gordon's peripherals were shoved occasionally, but always with an apology afterward. Bob's face spun. He turned to see Chloe's open hand and felt the heat wash into his cheek. She grinned up at him and thudded forward into his chest, this time with her arms open, wrapping them tightly around his waist. His own came down around her shoulders, squeezing her tightly, fitting the rush that came with it. 
She headbutted his sternum and they fell apart, their hands curling into fists and turning their attention outward to the other shoving humans. Bob sat on a broken tree, transferring blood from his bleeding eyebrow into the last unstained patches of white on his tunic. Others had chosen brown from the earth, and Chloe had black from the oil leaking from an automatic door that had been wrenched out of place. Gordon was busy disinfecting wounds. Do you feel satiated, Bob? No, but I am feeling better. Chloe sat on one side and John on the other, shoulder to shoulder staring at the sight, their eyes glittering at the embers that rose up. A tree was burning. It had started with a small spark and had quickly grown into something vast and uncontrollable. The resulting heat spread far. He could hear them. Other humans on the grass, hundreds of them. The only species that sought to investigate the strange destructive beacon in the night. 